assembly lube already on there. But since we have a little bit extra, we're going to go and put it on there as well. Put on a wrist pin of our piston. Get it all worked out there. Okay, we got that assembly lube now. Thoroughly on here, it's kind of look where you can tell where there's dry area. Let's go and put that all over. Okay, we're going to put some in here. Just put a little plop there and just work it. Yeah, again, with the motor oil going back and forth on it, eventually the assembly loop will dissipate. We're just using it for right now when it's a dry, uh, brand new install like this until the motor oil makes its way, which then within seconds, really. Uh, we want to make sure that there is uh, no friction, dry friction, on some of the moving uh, components there, especially uh, when you're dealing with, um, you know, pistons which rubs forcefully back and forth. So there we go. We got the assembly loop now, looped all in the piston area, as well as in this uh, housing. We didn't put anything on the piston face, so that's fine. That should be left dry out because it's going to hit hit with sparks in the, the piston valve and everything. You, you don't want too much uh, different compounds to interfere in between. It might dry it up and cause those black tar that normally you'll see on worn out pistons. Okay, so there we go. We've got that assembly loop on there. Anti-seize again, that what it means is causes the metal to not bound on, the, especially aluminum metal. They're known to pretty much melt into each other and cause a permanent bond. You don't want this to be permanently bound into your um, housing because it always got to keep moving. It won't if you don't have to put this in there, but it does help it though. Unless it's really an extreme kind of pressure, but more likely it won't. Here we go. Okay, we got that now. We're ready to go to do, do and make sure this goes in with a similar loop helping us. Again, it's going to be a really tight fit, so looking forward to a hammering time with a mallet, of course. Still hammer, but it's a soft uh, hammer. You never want to use any kind of metal hammer on this uh, area because it's aluminum. It will, it will put its mark on there. And you don't want any kind of mark or broken uh, gaskets. Okay, make sure the timing chain, cam chain guide there above is sitting properly. Okay, once we get close, I'm going to move the camera in here a little bit closer so you can see where I'm angling it. Okay, we're aiming now to put it into the hole. Let's see if you can see it without the... Okay, so see here, I'm going to lift. Eventually, I'm going to lift this. On here, I'm going to... Well, now we got to pull it back out because extended stroke or displacement it's making it extend pretty good far out and that's why we're putting a double gasket so just want to let you know we're putting a double gasket because it sometimes if it extends too much and it hits this part too close we'll have a problem as well you know you can start seeing marks on the piston head um, so that's why you want to make sure you kind of if it needs to be uh, put a thicker gasket in some cases when you increase the stroker to 8.2 since this will extend so much from the displacement of the wheel. Again, it's the same stroker, but it's just gonna, the displacement of the wheel it makes it extend so much. You're gonna need to pretty much get almost a good centimeter gaskets here. Since this is only a, a 2.5 extended, we're, we're fine with doubling up the, our normal um, paper gasket here. Get some any debris out. This has a little bit of, I don't know what it is. This piece of uh, grass flew right in. That looks good. Okay, so we got our stroker now in there. We can rest our chain for a second, and we're going to uh, pretty much focus on getting the wrist pin through here, and then also putting the other C clip to uh, lock it in from slipping on this side. Okay, there we go. I want to show you this so you can see fully what I'm doing. You see there, I'm trying to feed that through. So you can see it better. I think the camera's pretty much on this side. So I can squeeze it. There we go. 
Okay, we're gonna concentrate on getting the wrist pin through here. Try to do it with one hand, holding, holding the shaft up and then pushing the wrist pin through it, which I'm sure you get an idea. There we go. Has to be perfectly. This is the first time it's actually going in. Sorry, I moved the camera out of your way a little bit, but I had to see what I was doing. Okay. There we go. There we go. Just got to give it a little push. Should go in pretty smoothly. There we go. There we go. Now it's coming from this end. You see here, we want to flush it because don't worry, it won't fall off because we have that C clip on this one already to secure it. All right, now that we got it in, you can see here, it's pretty much how it looks like once it's in. Let's see if I can dig my camera in there. There we go. See, there it is. Now that what holds your stroker, that wrist pin there. And then now we're gonna do is tightening it. Securely here. You can see me try to put the C clip in here. Okay. So we got one C clip left. And see the angle is going to be uh, good for us here. Okay, what we're going to do is try to force it one of the housing. Trying to lift this up. Okay, I got one groove. You want to probably take it to the edges of your needle nose pliers so that way you don't have too much to release out or move out or it won't poke in. Okay. So you can see here I'm bending it to a. a, a oh. Almost there. Oh. There we go. Now just get your needle nose plier back out. Okay, you want to make sure it resonates in there so you can push it in like that. There it goes. Now it's fully covered. You can see here from the top. So there. It's secure now from the top. So we got it in. Okay, now the fun begins. The the pounding of getting that pretty much to fit all in. So there we go. Let's see if I can angle it better. So we can see it from the other view. A little bit longer out that way you can see the whole thing. Alright, you can see it now. Probably come closer. There we go, this will probably be fine. Okay, so we're gonna make sure we can force it into the dowel pins as well. If we have to extend the dowel pins and maybe put it ahead of time in this groove, we'll do so. Because it's already looked like the studs are pretty stiff. They're not flexing as far as anything. Okay, now what you wanna do is you wanna squeeze the piston in. So we have to work the piston in too now. You can see that's why they take the piston all the way because then we'll have to compact the ring and with the studs in the way, it's gonna be harder for us to try to compact these rings to get them in. But now since the rings are already, I think they're still in there. We can go ahead and do that now. There we go, see, it's tucked in. And we can go even, even further in there. Don't worry about the timing right now. We'll just, we'll just go and focus on getting this. All right. Be careful with your change eye too. You wanna make sure that you actually are there we go. So we'll make it tip to here, and that's where the pressure is on. We have to actually squeeze it. Try and make sure the gasket's not going to interfere. It's one thing enough to already have pressure. And now what we're going to do is we're going to lift our gasket off a little bit just to make sure it goes over the skirt. There we go. Because it's a slight paper variation. 
Let's see here. We want the skirt to go in first before we uh, secure the gasket. There we go. All right, this side is clear of the gasket. So the gasket is almost like in the middle. <laughs> okay. Okay, this is also clear of the gasket. So the gasket is not going to interfere with us trying to put the skirt in first. There we go. The skirt's going in. Again, we're just squeezing as much as we can. And now we can't do much more for it. Now we're gonna have to get our mallet hammer and just kind of tap it evenly. We tap this side, we gotta have to tap this side. And I believe the chain's gonna be ruffled a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and try to position the chain where it's not gonna get crunch. Okay, grab that side. We're gonna tap all four corners slowly. Way, and then we feel more secure. You can even go from here, but the thing about it is make sure you get your uh, uh, upper chain guide. There we go. There we go. Nothing metal again. Okay. Let's see if we can pull the chain out, make sure it's still not crunched in there. All right, it's, it's coming along. And now that since we got already um, the skirt pretty much a good one third in, we can go ahead and rest assured that our uh, gasket is not gonna further cause us any problems. So we can go ahead and tell the gasket to relax back next to the crankcase. Pretty much put it into his dowel pin area. Just try to tuck it back there. Again, this force will, will pretty much force it further to go flush. Okay, there's our chain here, you can see there. Yep, our chain, that's what I was worried about. See that little crunch there? I'm not sure you can see that. Okay, see that crunch right there? See the chain's crunched, and we have to actually release it. That's what I was afraid of. We wanna make sure we don't crunch our chain in the process of doing this, so we're gonna have to tap it back out a little bit. Got chain back out of crunch. Yeah. So, so many variations here, making sure everything now we can go ahead and give it a, another pound back in. Now that we know, we're going to go and hold our chain tightly out as we're pounding it. Okay, there we go. Just make sure that our chain's not in the way. Bring the chain here, but we get we're gonna need that little pounding area. So as soon as uh, it gets in there, what we could probably do is I believe we could put the lower chain guide right now, and we're gonna go and put the new one. Any chain guy will do just to hold it in place. So with this chain guy pretty much goes here. You can see it locks into this area here. It just kind of helps support the chain from falling to the very bottom, as it's doing for us right now. So there we go. That just helps it. Let's see if it doesn't get in the way of our hammer. But at least our chain is actually riding on the chain guide now. There we go. Continue back where we were. Let's get there. And the lower chain guide is very simple to install. There's no locking mechanism, it's just interlock. Once you uh, pretty much put the gasket after the chain guide, that's pretty much his locking mechanism. But we also want to make sure it doesn't get in the way of everything else too. And then you put your cylinder head on top, and that's pretty much just locking. It's just uh, interlock assembly. There we go. This is probably the furthest I ever got it in. Uh, 
from us testing it, the dry fit, so it's going good. I got confident we might not have to split the crankcase left and right or loosen the bolts. I think we should be okay. Do we still need this chain guide some more? Yeah, we do, just to make sure the chain doesn't get crunched up in there. Again, you don't want to damage the chain because all this, all this put together here will have been done for nothing once you have to reassemble everything just to get the chain back off. You have to pretty much take everything out, including the starter gear and everything. And that's not what we want. Just to get to the stroker and replace the chain is not fun. Okay. It's getting close. It's getting close to the meat. And again, our stroker is facing, you can see here, it's unfortunately we have to do it this way because the arrow needs to phase downward and our engraved 63, it's going to be flipped upside down. I, per se, don't like it aesthetically, but for performance, it's a little bit better. And no one's going to really see it anyway, but for show, I kind of like the things that always align uh, pretty much in the same correct direction, you know, just like you're reading a book. There we go, I'm just going to get this in there. Uh, you can see me hammering and see how close I am to getting it in there. The one challenge, I'll take the stud off so you can see. The one challenge we'll have again is making sure that dowel pin accepts uh, pretty much coming in because it looks like this is such a squeeze fit ready. And I'm not even sure if I can squeeze it in more on this end. So hopefully that dowel pin there, we put some new one. It has that lip where it's going to lift itself onto this new one. 